All right, well, welcome everyone to our first Saturday morning coffee chat. Elizabeth Foss and I are so excited that you're here. It's so fun to see your faces. We came up with uh, the idea to do some uh, virtual mom hangouts on Zoom last Saturday morning. We were texting each other about just all the stuff that was in our head about everything going on and said, we think moms need to get together and talk about this and we thought it would be more fun to do it off of social media in a place where we could see each other we could um, have a great chat board going so we can discuss with each other and just have some sense of community when we all have to be virtual right now so thank you all so so much for coming we have two very special guests joining us today melody lyons and susan husband both are mamas to large families including teenagers and college students so i'd love for you ladies to introduce yourself melody let's start with you tell us a little bit about where you're from and your family well we are in northeast ohio and there are 10 of us currently under one roof <laughs> and that includes uh three a, a young adult children, so 18, 20, and 22. Everybody's home right now, and we go all the way down to three years old. Um, so we're dealing with diapers and, you know, <laughs> and, and marriage discernment at the same time. Uh, my husband is, um, he's a fire chief, and so he's out in the world right now every day. And um, gosh, we're just trying to navigate. All my kids, by the way, um, they are all in school, but no, you know, no longer just doing the virtual mm -hmm. and they all lost their jobs as well. So we're kind of like in the midst of transitioning um, and navigating that storm a little bit. So we don't have anything, we don't have anything like solved at this point. We're just right, mid <laughs> right in the middle. Melody, I, I, there's a little glitch. Did you say they all lost their jobs as well? Yeah, they all did. Yeah, okay. So, and, and, and that was, um, so they, I think, like all the same day too, you know. So we kind yeah. of. Keep Oof, wow, that's that's a lot. That is a lot, and let's we'll ha let's talk about that tune a little bit because I'm sure. Um, yeah. There are many mamas here in similar situations with their children. Mm -hmm. Susan from Kansas, Susan husband, tell us a little bit about you and your family. Hi guys. So yes, I my name's Susan. I'm married to my husband Steve, and I get teased so much about my last name being husband and actually, you know, being a husband myself. So, um, but we have seven <laughs> boys, so you can imagine it's just crazy at our house and the food shortage is a little bit of an issue because I would imagine. our kids have small <laughs> appetites. So I'm like, oh, thank goodness it's Lent because yesterday we tried to fast on Fridays. <laughs> but they had bacon this morning, so my sweater smells like bacon. It's so awesome. But... <laughs> Anyway, so, but we farm and we also have a trucking company. So we truck commodities and Steve um, brokers commodities. So we're in a little bit different economic pathway, I guess. The markets are still being affected by what's happening with the virus. But as far as work goes, we're a little bit insulated. And then all of our kids, um, our oldest sons, so we, our oldest son is he'll be 19 on monday and then our youngest son is three but our oldest sons all work for us in the summer and so they earn enough money to help provide for school and buy their vehicles and mm -hmm. they're independent so i feel so blessed that they'll still be able to work for us maybe not for the same wages they did last summer but they'll still have a job and we're just we're right. in a very agricultural rural area so even if they, um, you know, we can't provide enough work for them, there will be work around us for them because there's always need for tractor drivers and my boys are highly capable. So anyway, that's your Farming 101 today. If you want to do or not, I don't know, but there you go. Oh, it's good to know that the farmers are farming. Yes. <laughs> Elizabeth, let's let's chat just a little intro on your family too, because you are the mother of nine and you have uh, the full gamut too. So just tell us a little bit about your family. Well, I don't have anybody in diapers, so I'm not worried about stocking diapers currently. Um, but um, I have at home right now, uh, my youngest is 11 and then we're all the way up through 23. Um, three of them are doing virtual college and grad school um, currently. Um, 
and then so how many teenagers do I have um <laughs> right now I have three teenagers and then um two young 20s and then I have um a 25 year old who uh, works for the University of Virginia and he's working from home in Charlottesville okay. so he stayed there and I have a 27 year old who is living in Brooklyn and um, he assures us that he is staying home. Uh, he's got two roommates and they are taking care of themselves and each other and they're keeping to themselves. And um, so that's the, the big trust button. Um, and then, um, and then I, my eldest is 31 and he's in Connecticut with his wife and five little ones. Okay. So uh, we're frequent FaceTimers lately, constant yes. FaceTimers. I, I would even go constant, beyond frequent, like yes. just a constant conversation. Somebody yes. in the house has them on FaceTime almost all day, every day. Yes, so. I understand that. I'm the oldest of eight children, <laughs> and there's a lot of grandchildren now, too, and that's what's going on in our family, too. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. we're also scheduling cousin uh, FaceTime sessions because they need to see each other. The kids, right. the little one, right. need to, to see their cousins. So let's kick off our discussion um, by chatting about not our teens, but your mama hearts as the mother of teenagers and young adults who are facing this new normal, who had school interrupted, friends interrupted, jobs interrupted, all of these things. And we'll talk about ministering to their hearts and helping them navigate in a second. But Elizabeth, let's start with you and then Melody and Susan, hopefully you can chime in and just share how you're doing with having your right. teens home and yep. dealing with this. And mamas who are on the call, um, start, start a chat in the comments and share how you're doing too, because I think it's good and healthy to let it out a little bit of how, yeah. how you're doing as the mom of teens. So, yeah. ahead, so Stephanie and I talked about this just a little bit this morning and, um, and I'm noticing in the last couple of days that a lot of the talk coming from in, in my messages and in my mail and people who are excited about this Zoom conference in particular, um, mothers by nature and in any time are the, the chief encouragers and the chief consolers and it's what we do and it's what we're gifted to do um, and we absorb a lot of the emotional energy in our families um, and on, under ordinary times you know we have places to take that energy and to 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 vent or to process or whatever and this is trickier because we're, we're all under roof and there's a lot of emotion. Um, and I think that the, the unique challenge is always with teenagers and young adults is that, that they are, there are a lot emotionally, you know, there's just a lot there. And, um, and right now, because they have lives and they've been out in that world that's shutting down, they all have unique disappointments. Um, and you know, straight up sorrow in some cases, and um, and then worry. You know, our ones who are of working age, um, they're not feeling quite the economic worry that we are, but they definitely have had their economic plans disrupted. And you know, moms can hear all of it, and every kid processes differently. Um, so what I'm hearing from a lot of mothers is, okay, I'm doing the best I can with this, and I'm taking it all in, but my regular sources of, of support for me are not the same either. Um, Mike and I had a, a talk last night where I said, I just, I want to be able to see the gift that this is. You know, I don't think I really thought that there was ever going to be an extended period of time that the six are home right now. We're all home together again, certainly not at this time of year, you know, and, and there is a, a certain gift to that, that I don't want to miss in the in the angst and the anxiety. Um, one of the moms I talked to yesterday said that her regular Bible study group became a Zoom group mm -hmm. and that they paused in what they had been doing and, you know, <laughs> shifted to talking more about some of this stuff, you know, with a, with a biblical focus. Um, and, um, and that there were a lot of tears in that Zoom meeting that night because, you know, they all needed someplace to do that. Right. Um, yeah, I think uh, Colleen, I see, I can only see like the very beginning of comments, but Colleen, um, I, I kind of know what the rest of her comment was. She said, our heart is breaking for her senior. And I, I think that there is a lot of that going on 
a lot of our kids who are planning on once in a lifetime things that give closure to certain stages in life that it's gone it's done um you know and and our and when we say my heart's breaking for them like i literally have shed tears for that like that feeling of absorbing that emotional energy so i'm really curious melody you know i you're you're navigating some of that with your kids um and, and some of the, the the things that go with job loss and um you know real life things but all under one roof with a lot of uncertainty out of there so what are your thoughts about what I what I've been doing with myself, how I'm yeah, going how to respond, yeah. and both, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, first, I just want to admit that I'm not sleeping well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me all. too. Um, and that's been really a struggle, especially this past week. I find that during the day when I'm occupied, I'm doing really well, and I I tend toward the hopeful side with my personality. By the time I get through the day and have seen, you know, news or social media, by the time I've really grappled with the fact that, you know, we couldn't find what we needed at the grocery store and had to make, you know, a lot of trips and then have to go again tomorrow, and just the little things and hearing my children express their concerns or fears, um, by the time I hit bed, it's like, it, it, it's not happening, you know. It's all it's there been, and it doesn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't, and it's quiet, and it's overwhelmed. So I've really been focusing on um, on nutrition, like keeping everything the same, keeping everything mm -hmm. uh, healthy but better, getting outside, making sure I get the exercise. I'm more tired, so I'm more inclined to, like, you know, stress eat or sit in a corner. Um, mm -hmm. Really important to just maintain, like, focus uh, very technically on what is healing for for the body and the mind and the soul and right. um, also doing that for my kids and that i think makes such a difference between like spiraling out of control with a hopelessness uh -huh. or, or fear and being able to maintain for for ourselves and also for the family um and focusing on positive news like really really nurturing hope like we have to we have to speak the truth to ourselves constantly the gospel truth mm -hmm. right 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 <laughs> Like, you know, okay, worst case scenario, we all die. <laughs> what then, right? And then kind of work my way down from there. Like, what else is really beautiful and hopeful about today? Wow, I get really, like Elizabeth, you said, um, you have this opportunity, this unique situation with all the kids, or most of them being in one place that you just never thought you'd really have again. Right. And um, it is, there's something really beautiful and precious about it. So. And I, you know, <laughs> I wanted to zero in, <clears throat> excuse me, for a minute on um, on what you were saying about uh, avoiding that stress stress response. You know, whether it's like stress eating or stress scrolling, or yeah. you know, like it, it. What strikes me is when we're tired. Um, I, at least I know for me that that scrolling thing. It's like I just don't have the energy to do anything else, and mm -hmm. I'm just you know filling my brain with something random but at this time that's really going to play against the good night's sleep um and we talked stephanie last time we were talking about you know pretzels for breakfast just that whole idea that this is now more than ever we need to to not do that and not um not stress binge on whatever your binge is kind of thing and to maybe right. identify for ourselves and for our kids what is that binge you know what is that thing that i can maybe help you and you can help me and we can avoid that and go for a walk instead Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Susan, what do you think um, about taking care of you right now? Uh, I just agree with everything that you guys are saying. Um, I mean, well, I have, my husband has been sick for almost seven years with Lyme disease. And so I feel like my role and responsibility in our home is, it's not really changing. It's just like intensified as far as trying to order the way of health for our family and um but like just for me personally i feel like i because i think i live with all men <laughs> and they can compartmentalize things you know <laughs> and they can totally down right. their zone and it's like things bounce off of them and, and it's you um said it perfectly elizabeth you we absorb you know we absorb we mm -hmm. we feel all the feels and i'm like sometimes lord i just don't want to feel you know because yeah it, 
and it's stinking hard. And when the boys are looking at me like, what's the problem exactly here? You know? <laughs> and you are in a unique situation where there's like no feminine camaraderie yeah, at all. <laughs> right, right. So for me, it is um, giving myself permission to cry. And I do a lot of crying in the shower. But, um, and everybody's going to have their unique outlet, but for me, it's exercise because if I don't go run and you don't have to have exercise videos, or just go walk. You don't need a gym membership just being outdoors. And because women, we need the balance, like the, we're more ordered mentally and emotionally. It's good for our immune system. It just helps me to not be so commanded by my emotions i can be more ordered ordered and reasonable in you know my daily activities and and even in my response to my kids if i've had some sort of exercise even if it's like doing squats with my toddler while i'm you know whatever stirring the pot i just some kind of movement is is really um vital to me because my boys are they handle things pretty well, but I can, um, because boys aren't tend to not, they tend to not show their emotions a lot and they have a very hard time articulating. Um, if you have a son in your family who can talk a lot about how they feel, you are so lucky, but my boys are like, it's fine. I'm good. You know, but I know that they are making adjustments and struggling too. And so being the sounding board for that, because I try to insulate Steve from, as much stress as possible because stress makes him feel so bad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just trying to stay, stay balanced. And like, I love how Melody said to remain hopeful, but that's a virtue we have to pray for. It's mm -hmm. so hard to be hope to, to remain hopeful in a time where there's so much negativity um, coming in. So I love aspirations, you know, the little tiny short prayers, because sometimes you get prayed out. I mean, I'm just going to confess that I, you know, we <laughs> say the rosaries and pray all the prayers and read the scriptures, but sometimes I'm just tired and all I have are the little aspirations that I say. Lord, make haste to help me. <laughs> um, yes, right. Um, yeah. Jesus, I trust in you. And I just, I right. surrender just all. the little ones, right. I surrender all. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of, where I'm at, but I just wanted to to pick up real quick um, on the hope thing, Melody. Too, you know, we talk about you know, praying for hope and and hope being a gift, but also cultivating hope. And I was wondering if if you had some specific thoughts on how you're cultivating hope. Yeah, well, it's very very practical, very concrete, and um, throughout my days, I actually have to. Um, I have to manage it in the same way that I would manage uh, meal planning or, um, you know, or any other, any other uh, aspect of care for myself or for household. Um, I have little hacks that I use throughout the day. I listen to, um, I love Christian music. Uh, you know, I have my favorite bands, the ones that are just, they're just, the words are, are repeating the hope of Christ to me. They're repeating right. the words of scripture. They're, they're reminding me of what I already know about the truth of Christ, about the truth of eternity, you know, about the truth of God's love. And I know the words and I'm, and I'm working throughout the day. And when my thoughts I like have a tendency to just kind of, if I'm doing the dishes, I can get very wrapped up, you know, in, in my fear and in my thoughts and my worries. If I can put on a song, especially one that I really know well, and I find myself oriented towards the words of the gospel again. So that's one little thing, um, making sure that when I speak to other people, um, I am using that same language. So even if I'm not feeling it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Our emotions are, they happen to us, you know, and then we have a choice. We can do, we can do uh, one thing or another with them, but we need to be speaking the truth. So um, repeating what we know to be true to our children, for example, even if we're afraid and trembling inside. And we can admit that fear, but then we also say, you know, and, and here, you know, this is the truth. Oh, of, right. uh, to here, articulate here. it. Yeah. So it's very deliberate. I'm careful with my language. I'm careful with what I listen to. I do not watch the news. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of media scrolling, but I make sure that my feed reflects the truth that I believe. So, um, you know, most of the, most of the people on my feed reflect some kind of hope 
to me and um, the beliefs that I have. So it's not necessarily like insulating myself from the rest of the world, but it is, it, it, it's just repeating truth, which is far more important than all the details that, that filter in, which we, like, we don't know. We don't know necessarily what's true, what's not about the future, but we do know ultimately what's true about the future. And that's right. where we need to focus. So. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. And I think that, you know, it's helpful for you. And, and maybe we can talk a little bit about how we can do that with our kids too. You know, what are you saying to your teenagers right now? Well, I am just me personally. Um, I feel like our kids, even as teenagers and even as college kids, their experiential window of knowledge is very narrow. And so right. it is, they are processing things in a way that is completely different than us. Most of us have experienced hardship and disappointment, personal crisis or struggle, we grieve loss. And all of those things help us to take in the, the you know, the potential, you know, the struggle that is, is within this virus. And, and we can sort of order that within our, how are we going to handle things? How do I see heaven, my eternal perspective? But these kids are so young and they don't have the experiential window of knowledge that we do. And so this is, I feel like it's so important for us to show leadership right now, to set our feelings aside frequently, like go process your feelings, not maybe in front of your kids. I mean, it's okay for them, I guess, to see you sad, but not overwhelmed because we, Stephanie gave me this really great book, um, Suffering is Never for Nothing. And I have been, I've read it three times. And she talks about after she lost her first husband, um, how she just had to do the next thing. And so you, you process the difficulty, like with our kids, we've sat them down, this is what it could be. We don't actually know everything about what this virus means, but we have to do the next thing. You can't go to school, you can't see your friends. The seniors, um, I feel so sorry for them because that is their world. High school has been their world, yeah. you know, and we have to yeah. show them how to do the next thing and show them that it's, it might not be their ideal, but it's not the end and that God can unfold great things within that. And for just speaking personally for me, the greatness in this opportunity is that my kids become resilient, is that they become goal setters, is that they yeah. learn how to manage stress and difficulty in healthy, positive ways. And they get to do it with a team, which is their family. We're going to do this together. And I don't want to get all like sentimental, but this is like, I was talking to my dad and he said, you know, the generation that's that we're right now have never had a war, not, not, you know, they've never experienced like the extreme hardship that maybe our grandparents and great grandparents did. And those things, while we don't wish them, wish for them to happen, they brought about particular fruits and virtues that only suffering can. So I, it's a really important for me to show the boys like through the things that the changes that we're having to make and things that we're going through um that there is a greater good happening here and because that is truth like melody said that is a that is truth that is god he reigns over all and he allows us to become better people within the hardship because our suffering is never pointless it's never for nothing things do not randomly happen to us it's not in vain it's very, it's very hard for us, like our human mind and hearts to grasp sometimes, but we just, we put our trust in him and then we show our kids, like we lead our kids um, through this and with hope, like Melody said, but also just, we're going to come out on the other side of this, better people, I hope, if we're, if we're doing, you know, I guess the right things, hopefully, and yeah. just, and, and having confidence giving our kids confidence like a real confidence not confidence in their social media followers but confidence in who they are in their souls as human beings and that that opportunity is right in front of us i think yeah no that was all good <laughs> thank you so much i think that's so good it's just so much so many nuggets of wisdom there to pull from for sure Susan, uh, Jenny asked in the comments, she said she's putting on that strong front for her teenagers, but she feels 
kind of fake inside because that's not how she feels like the, the front, it's a front. And do you have any, you know, comments on that of just maybe feeling a little bit fake uh, yeah, yeah. with being that strong? Yeah, so um, I agree because we want to show them um, a realness in things. So just to clarify, um, I, I work out a lot of my tears in the shower, but I do that mostly so that my husband doesn't, doesn't worry about me um, because he, I, I'm re really more sheltering him, but not so much with my little guys. I think that we need to try to preserve cheerfulness and, and, and normalcy, normalcy, is that how you say it? For the little, little kids, they don't need to, they don't need to experience shock and trauma right now, but your older kids, like your teenagers, I have brought my older ones together. I've cried with them. I have expressed to them my worry. So they know I am affectionate with them. I will go get a hug from my oldest teen son, my big six four guy, and I'll say, Man, this is hard today. I just need a hug. Let's keep going. And he so I, I show them show them the real. But then on the other side, they you can't be laying on the couch eating your pretzels for four hours. Like <laughs> I know, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to criticize anyone because my bent is beer and chips. I mean, thank goodness it's Lent because <laughs> the fridge is shut down. I'm just going to be raw with you guys here. But it, this is where just the act of the will and when we model that for our kids, they, they come alongside of us, I think, because it makes them feel like I'm doing this with you. You know, I was kind of grew up feeling like my parents knew how to do everything and they were in charge and they didn't need me. They needed me to do my chores and such. But as far as like doing, taking on a, a, a struggle together as a family, I, didn't, I, I never went through that. And I love that my boys can come alongside of me and we're working on things together. And um, yeah, they, they see the real, but then they see, hopefully they see me making the act of, to pray, to praise, to turn on the praise music and to find joy, even when it's, we don't necessarily feel joyful, you know, but I always feel like grace comes and God just honors our, we give these tiny efforts and he, he brings them into fruition in bigger ways. You know, we just exert ourselves in small ways. So I just want to encourage you moms who don't hide it, but don't let it be all consuming. That's really what I should have just said in three words. <laughs> no, I, think, good. I liked all your words. They were all good. <laughs> all good words. Can I can I comment on what Misty, yes. Misty just commented? Um, let me see where, where did it go? Um, I know I can't find it. Oh, she said I had to pray for compassion because I realized I was doing too much, you know, buck up because I just don't do well with complaining. Um, and that she cried for the first time really this morning herself. And um, I think that's really important as, as moms to, we want to, we want to fix everything, you know, like we want to make our kids feel better um, when they're crabby or um, angry or frustrated or just, you know, they're just off. Like we want to swoop in and be like, come on, <laughs> you know, fix yourself. It's okay. You know, Jesus, Jesus rules. Like it's all, <laughs> it, you know, get with the program, hope, 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 you know, and yeah. uh, they're really important and, and I think um, somebody else had commented about validating feelings as well yeah. yes so yes. important to say it is okay to grieve it is yeah. okay to grieve this and it is okay to be angry and it is okay to be frustrated like all those are legitimate this is not um, you know it, even though we're, we're choosing to do something for a greater good like to stay home to, to protect people or whatever we've chosen to do as families what is happening is difficult and there are things that are uh, that are not good that are going on you know people's uh, the kids are losing their jobs the parents are losing their jobs family members are losing losing jobs people are losing their businesses um you know separation from friends loss yeah. of a, an outlet like i have one one kid in particular who's like a prowling lion you know <laughs> he's just right he, he needs that physical outlet that expression <clears throat> feeling he's the walls in the house are you know they start to like <laughs> get smaller and smaller so i i think letting them do that and not just swooping in for the fix it kill yeah. right away and yeah. mothering the heart rather than like managing the heart 
Yes, yeah. I love that melody. I think that is so true. I know Brene Brown, she talks a lot in her book about shame and, yes. and, and, and like we all have kind of different personality traits and strengths and like I'm a, an encourager and I tend to feel like, oh yeah, I need to step back and let them feel the feelings. And, and sometimes our kids need to be able to name it and they have a really hard time saying it, you know, um, are you feeling overwhelmed? And then, oh yes, I'm feeling overwhelmed. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. Do you want quiet space or do you want me to help you? Do you need to go, do you need to go get mad? We bought a boxing, we bought a punching bag and boxing gloves. So we've got a couple <laughs> pairs hanging up in our garage. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, speak on this for boys, because I don't know with girls, um, I can't speak on this, but boys need to have space to get it out. And if that means pushing back your couches and, or taking all the furniture out of a room and just knowing the walls are gonna get shredded, do it. Give them space mm -hmm. and time and don't hover moms. Like you don't need to be there. They're probably going to bleed. My kids play fight with fists and there's blood sometimes. <laughs> Just like let them let it out. I mean, they, they really, especially boys, they really do need freedom to get their testosterone out, their energy, their aggression, not in a mean way. Like my kids don't hurt each other in a mean way, but whatever it is, if it's um, boxing, if it's pillow fights, if it's um, a pull-up bar, what provides something, some kind of, thankfully it's nice now getting nice outside in a lot of places so they can go outside. Um, if they need to hit a tree stump with a bat, what whatever it is, you don't need to, you know, get all concerned about their aggression. They just have to have a place and you you can tell them, like I'll tell them, and you just go do something, you know, you, this is your free space and place. I'm not going to hover, um, get, go work it out. It's okay. Like even my older kids, um, doing some, their weight lifting. Cause I know a lot of you guys probably have high schoolers who are not doing their high school sports now. Mm -hmm, and right. even for girls, that is like a, your kids who are in track or whatever, they come home more cheerful after sports practice cause they've worked it out physically. So make sure you give your kids space and place um to do that without without hovering so my daughter was saying yesterday my my youngest teen um she did a, a little facetime with a couple of little girls who were into ballerinas and um she has this beautiful tutu that we rented for the competition season that she'll probably never wear so she put it on for these little girls and one of the little girls asked you know how how much do you practice or something like that? And she did the math in her head and, and she said, well, I take 14 hours of ballet a week. And then I thought to myself, my gosh, she's just counting ballet hours and started doing, you know, what other dance she was doing. And I thought, this is a huge physical shock to her system, you know, to go from, from that level of activity, physical activity to being confined at home. And I, she's not alone. I mean, yeah. All, all these kids that have been running and jumping and playing and dancing and everything else in an organized manner, and now they're not doing it. And it's going to show up in their whole world, you know, and every, every, emotionally it's going to show up. If physical takes physical toll, you know, we can't just sit around because they, they can't, they need to do something. And um, ballet in my sunroom where I've cleared furniture is, is not gonna cut it. She's gonna need to start thinking about how else to be physical in the world, you know, because as much as, and I, I think we said this last time, I, 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 I've got five boys and four girls and I feel like the boys live bigger in a house, like they are just more in a house physically. Um, but I think the girls need that that physical outlet as much as the boys do it's just it manifests itself a little bit differently so um let's let's talk have, a little yeah let's yeah. talk a little bit about um a teenager's rhythm of a day and routine because i'm sure all three of you ladies are trying to work with your teens on you know not being on the couch with scrolling their phone all day long now that they're all home so let's talk about that but first i just want to welcome you all to ask questions uh, if you have a question you want to do in the chat, just ask it and we will we'll get to that. Or if you'd like to 
verbally ask your question, just put like a hand raise or an emoji in the chat and I will call on you so that we can um, let you turn on your microphone and ask your question. But um, Melody, maybe we can start with you and talk about rhythm and routine in a teen's life. I was really um, struck by the Instagram post you wrote earlier in the week about letting them sleep in a little bit, letting them, you know, have kind of this gentle transition and not just, you know, lay the smack down with a hour by hour routine the first day they're home <laughs> and stuck. Um, mm -hmm. But talk about how you're working your teens through, you know, their day and what that can look like. Well, it's funny that you're starting with me because I feel like an atomic bomb hit, hit the rhythm in our mm -hmm. house. <laughs> And I, I don't think it's the, the dust has settled yet, so I don't necessarily have an answer yet. Um, I will say that it's a bit messy because I do have the the three the three older ones. Um, I guess more like the two older ones who are out of the house and having their own schedule, and just sort of they were having them back in um, rearranges everything. And I would say that it is messy, but one of the fruits that has come from it is that it has disrupted our life, but in a family centric way. And I guess I mean that I'm seeing now more that they're interacting with the younger siblings. Um, I walked in the other day and my oldest son was teaching my 15 year old daughter like something about computers. I have no idea what they were doing, but it was, you know, and my first reaction was to say, oh, honey, you have to go finish your, you know, your essay for your online class to her. And then I realized, what am I doing? Like this, <laughs> this moment is exceptionally beautiful and cool. She is learning. And I don't think this ever would have happened. Yeah, I, I mean, it would have, they interact, but like in the middle of the day, you know, that he's home mm -hmm. and that he's doing this and he has the time. So I'm kind of at this point, uh, we do have something of a rhythm, but it's more like a natural rhythm centered around breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> and, but otherwise, I'm kind of letting them explore this relationship uh, just as a family. Um, and so that's, I guess that's not very helpful to people <laughs> because it's not like, oh, we have this nice rhythm and everybody's getting everything done and, you know, working together. But honestly, I'm seeing the fruits blossom everywhere everywhere with relationship and the things that they're doing together. Um, the kids, the little ones, they're doing a lot of play while I try to figure out what's going on. I have my own deadlines and things going on. Um, and other than that, just a lot of heavy interaction. So again, not super practical, but at this point, we're so new in the game um, that, that we're still, you know, again, we're still picking up the pieces. And right now that's good enough for me. People are getting the basics of their work done. Um, it doesn't take that much time. And, and with everything else, it's just sort of organic. I, I actually think that's hugely helpful um, because I think that's the way it's working here too. And my guess is that we're not alone. It's not just you and me. I, I think a lot of people are naturally finding out that that's, that's kind of the best approach to take right now because we need some time to sift it all and make it all work for our own unique household and personalities. Susan, what are you finding with routine? Yeah, I um, love what you guys are both saying and maybe just letting our kids, we let our kids kind of sleep in a little bit. This happened to all fall on when we were naturally having spring break. And so um, and it's, it's things are getting very busy with uh, starting to get very busy in preparation for farm work. So my husband has a list of goals um, and I was like, you know, they, I think they just need to sleep and play and the nature of a, a larger family and having a college kid at home, our littlest is so close to our oldest son and just watching them play and bond. But I noticed it and I don't, I, I kind of like, um, liken this to the holidays where we've all enjoyed our our treats and our movies and then the new year hits and we all sort of crave structure and so we're kind of coming on the end we're approaching that right now and so 
and this might not be for you guys, but if it helps some of you, one thing that we decided to do was just to, to goal set and to keep, but keep things simple and small, but giving each child a chance to say, you know, we ask them, what are, what are your goals for? Maybe that, maybe just to, if you can do it by the week or by the day, whatever it is. So we're all kind of aware and helping each other. But then I, I want to encourage you moms as much as you want to comfort your kids and make things as comfortable and happy for them as possible. Stop doing all the work. <laughs> that is right, just for sure. Yes. Stop doing all the work. Your kids are not going to get better or do better by sitting on the couch, playing video games, watching movies, texting and FaceTiming their friends. They, there's zero growth happening there. So we have to kind of forward think for our kids because Maybe it's a comfort to us to see them just being pacified, but on the on the end of this, we're they're not this is is this how we want them to handle stress mm -hmm. and difficult times as adults in the future? Mm -hmm. And so if our kids can't set a goal, we're trying to help them set some small goals. And then like with my older kids, because I don't want to helicopter them, I they are all either assigned chores or we'll put the chore list out and everybody has to volunteer for what they will do. And instead of me just nagging them, I tell them the trash needs to be out by four o'clock. If and you just, whenever you can work it in your schedule, George, that's awesome, but it's going to be out by four o'clock. And if it's not out by four o'clock, then you also get to do the dishes tonight and bathe the kids. Or if they have a screen and you're allowing some time, you lose screen time. You have leverage as parents and we just do it in a, in a loving way just kind of matter of fact and and but these little boundaries like bumpers I call them, we call them bumpers like in the bowling alley just kind of help them stay within the lanes oh sorry oh sorry my husband he knows I'm not be doing anyway um, so just like um yeah, you're trying to keep the peace, but, um, uh, you know, like, we're just, we tend to be workers as moms, but we need help, and, and your kids are going to push back. My kids hate folding laundry. They hate it, and I just hug them. I love you. Thank you for folding my laundry, and they roll their eyes, and I'm like, I'll thank you. Do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, do it anyway. Your wife is going to love you someday. If you become a priest, it won't be a shock to have to do your own laundry. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. So I guess that's my encouragement with some kind of schedule, some kind of goal setting, and then they need to help you run the house. What I, I want to tag onto that. Can I tag just real sure. quickly, just, just that one little phrase, because I, I think that I can actually affirm it. So Susan said, your wife is going to love you someday. <laughs> um, in reference to these boys who are being asked to do household things and household management things, um, and we have always, once our kids, we take our, our teens grocery shopping with us. And then once they get their driver's license, we, we let them shop for like, when my oldest got his driver's license, you know, we had eight kids at that point. So it was a family of 10 and he, he did it. Um, and it was very matter of fact and very, you know, of course you're going to go do this because it's what you do. And this is, you know. That way you can take the car to art or whatever. And um, and now his wife loves him for that. You know, I mean, he, he is home with five kids and his wife and together they are fully capable of meal planning and getting the shopping done under a crisis situation and thinking ahead towards what they need and, um, and all those things. And I'm watching it just come to life in somebody else's home. And recognizing the value, even with boys, of of just it, and I, insisting sounds really heavy-handed, but we have always said this is your house too, and we're a big family, and we need everybody to chip in, and you know that's the way it has to be, and that's real life, and that's how they grow into real life grown-ups um, because they they know my kids, you know. As hard as it is for the ones that are out there on their own, I do know that they know. They left here knowing how to take care of themselves. That is so encouraging. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had posted over here about the kids 
pushing back and saying, like kind of giving the attitude like it's your job, mom. And um, I get bent out of shape interiorly, but then I just have to like regroup and ask myself, and I pray for the words a lot because sometimes things don't come out of my mouth right. And I know that I've, I've lost my temper and been frustrated with my children. I have some kids, some boys, you know, you have different personality types in your house. Like I have some kids who are naturally pious. Like I have a son who would come home from school all day, have wrestling practice and four hours of homework. And he would offer to help me. Can I help you fold the laundry? Like it's, it's 1030 at night. He should be doing his homework. And you know, and I'm like, I, I need like six more of those, not just one. You know? <laughs> and then you have kids that it's like it's like offering their left arm if you ask them to pick up a sock, you know, and they're just so dramatic and uh and so like sometimes I just have to pray for the words, but I think like for me it's consistency. I need cons I have to be consistent and then I also have to ask my husband who sometimes isn't always tuned in because of his illness, but I will pull him aside privately and ask for help. Say, um, I know you probably don't notice this and that's okay, but I need you to come along beside me or go to the boys separately and tell them, I'm your wife. Go to them and say, my wife, I love her. She's struggling. She needs your help. Come on, be a man, buck up and help. And that might take on a different tone if you have daughters. I don't know because I don't have any. <laughs> but, um, they, I guess I would just say, hold on to the, the future because what they want right now is not most of the time what they need. So be ready for the pushback. And um, if, if I tell myself I'm ready for them to be frustrated or have attitude with me, then it's easier for me to take it on. And I just can, can, can continue to be gentle. But you also need to have some kind of system of consequence in place. Like this is just practical. Like the kids don't understand. You probably pay for their phones. You probably pay for their sports equipment. You probably pay for their sports enrollment. You pay for their food. And I just tell them oh you know what I have no problems with you not eating look it up in Google how many days can you go without food totally fine with that I'll give you water water's good you know whatever it is but just that you have leverage over your kids and you just tell them in a gentle way I love you I won't allow you to grow up and be a non-contributing human being it's my job and I have to answer to God ultimately I've got to answer to him yeah so you might not love me right now but I've got to say to God you know I tried to teach my children, so. Amen. Let's talk for a minute about food because you just reminded me of a question that we had last time that we said we would get back to with the teens. Um, we had a question last time from a mom who was really annoyed with the constant kitchen, dishes out, food all the time. And, um, and one thing that, that I, you know, I want you guys to chime in on, but um, I think it's really important right now with food and and paper and all those things that are in short supply in our stores i don't think it's at all a problem to tell our teenagers okay here's the deal <laughs> we have this food here and that store is completely empty and i don't know when it's going to be restocked that is the truth so let's be very careful stewards of of the resources in our house right now and i need you on that team a hundred percent um, because I, I think about when, you know, Susan, you talked about generations past and our, our grandparents and they grew up with this, you know, the reuse the aluminum foil mentality and our kids don't know it. And I don't think it's a bad thing to bring them in to understanding that part of household management right now, because yeah. then we're going to get more intentional eating and fewer children, um, teenagers like blowing the, the food supply out of the you know out of the water which would be bad yeah melody you go because <laughs> i need help with this i um you know my boys they work so hard so their appetites are huge and i'm on also... that's legitimate hunger you know like, they are well, hungry really, well i don't know i i'm my son ate four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches last night as a snack you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. He's my wrestler. He's the same way, so he's the like same way here. 
I can't, I'm, I'm finding out how much we actually do eat now that I can't just, you know, run to Walmart and pick up an extra right. package of uh, ground beef or whatever. And it's, it's alarming, <laughs> you know, and a couple of my kids, I think, a, you know, a stiff, a stiff breeze could blow them away. I'm already always pushing calories on them, but um, they're active and their metabolisms are just high and they just like consume food. Very hard to keep them. Um, and I have, I have been a little bit naggy, you could say, <laughs> about the food, but I really want them to understand these are recent because I'm understanding in a brand new way. I already right. knew intellectually, but experientially, I live in suburbia. I can go to Stuff Mart whenever I want to. And now right. I'm like, oh shoot, we've got like a roll yeah. of paper towels left. You know, we can't just like yeah. take six of them to wipe up the little droplet of milk that's filled. Mm -hmm. So I, I have been communicating that to my kids, but um, yeah. maybe in a less than pleasant way, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard because you can't be the, the kitchen cop all the time. Like I'm just not in there all the time. And right. you want the kids to, um, to exercise moderation and self-control, but um, when they haven't, it's just like us trying to, to break a habit, it's hard. And when it's been their normal to just go get a snack whenever they want, it's really hard. Like we, yesterday I tried to say, okay, everybody go pick out your snack for the day. It's on the counter. When it's gone, it's gone, but the pantry's closed. And I showed them some pictures online of the empty shelves and I'm like, this is because I'm the only one going out right now because Steve is immune compromised and so is our son Charles. So I'm the only one going to any stores or doing anything. And I'm like, this is what it looks like. Like it's food is not going to appear and our garden is not going right now. And so um, we've, we've been trying that, but then they just stand there in the kitchen, like staring, you know, forlorn into the pantry. And then I'm like, okay, go get something. But <laughs> it, it's a process. Like I don't actually, I don't have an answer because, um, but I think that you as moms have to weigh out what is like the emotional eating and what is your kids boredom eating and call that on them. Like, Hey, I, I know that we just ate like 30 minutes ago, so I'm pretty sure you're not hungry right now. Are you eating cause you're bored? Cause uh, let's go play a game together or let's go come right. help me with this and help them to recognize it without shaming them. Just like, ah, man, I eat when I'm bored too. I mean, it's just like, it, I don't know why my brain wants to do that. So let's work on this together or some kind of um, positive way to help them handle it. But as far as like super concrete, like answer, you can check this off your list of struggles. I don't have one. Like it's just, I, it's hard. I, I do have different. one practical, I have one practical suggestion and um, people who don't have large families, sometimes, you know, I wouldn't necessarily share this with them but some of you will understand and some of you are already doing it. We do have a large padlocked box. We have two padlocks on this baby because right. when you have, <laughs> and that's where a lot of um, treats go, a lot of snacks, um, things that are not supposed to be consumed all the time and maybe like dad's treats. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you have, you know, we've got eight kids in the house with varying levels of craftiness and ability and also cravings, <laughs> you know, sometimes they just can't, um, they just choose not to regulate their behaviors and stuff will go missing. And so that keeps it a little bit easier. And I'm not saying like, we don't have like our fridge and our cabinets and stuff like that. But you know, when you've got things that are t temptation and you've got a bunch of kids in the house and they are dealing with maybe like, maybe during the school day, I don't know, we're, we're homeschooling, but you know, when I was in school, I used to just junk out all day long. Like my parents didn't have control over what I was eating. And I yeah. had candy bars when, I, when my energy got low, you know, and I was having chips and whatever I wanted. Um, at home, it's a little bit more controlled. If you don't want food eaten and you have that control, it's okay. It's okay to lock stuff down. It's okay to put stuff in your husband's car. And, and that's... <laughs> it the is. hiding spot. Have a hiding spot. The hiding spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's okay. awesome. I see over here, Mimi said, make sure your kids eat a whole, their whole meal. And one thing I just totally agree with that because sometimes kids will eat 
uh, you know, part of their plate and then they want to get a snack later. So one thing that I realized that I was doing was I was putting too much food on some of my kids' plates. And so giving them portions that they will finish. Um, and then if my kids take seconds, too bad. You have to finish it if you take seconds because you – like somebody's probably doing without if you took seconds or at least wrap it up and that's what you have to have for lunch tomorrow something so right. they're not picking around at their meal and then you're scraping that into the trash or I eat the leftovers usually and then um you know they're getting a snack later so um yeah I think that's good we have just a couple minutes left, but there's one question that's been asked. Uh, we got some email questions before we went live today, um, and it's also coming up in various forms in the chat, and that is about teens and relationships. Many of the questions are relating to teens and their boyfriend or their girlfriend, their dating relationships or their courtship relationships. How are the three of you navigating that? Because the social life of a teenager matters a lot, and a lot of them are you know, the full spectrum. I think a couple moms said their teen is angry that they can't go out and see their girlfriend, grieving, sad, mad, all of these things. How are you navigating the dating courtship relationships with your children or even just the friendships, some deep friendships. If you can't see your friend, that's, that can be just as big a deal as a dating relationship. How are you all discussing that, handling that? Um, well, <laughs> It's that's challenging. Um, my oldest is in a serious relationship um, and he's sad, you know, there's a sadness there, but he has a little bit more maturity, I think, than he would have as a teenager. Um, and so, you know, technology obviously helps connect. Um, but, you know, it, ironically, he's the one who had he shared something with me because I told him I was going to be on here and, and he shared something. He said, you know, this is really important. He said, if you get the chance to say this, I think you should. And he wanted to talk about technology um, from his experience as a teenager and as a young adult. Um, he said, you know, everybody's already in isolation. We're, we're already isolated from all of the things that um, we want to be doing and the connections that we have. He said, but, the tendency with technology, with our with our phones, and um, you know the constant, constant texting uh, and video games and whatever, is that it becomes an isolation within an isolation, and that really struck me because he was saying, "Don't allow that, don't allow that um, the, the that connection that people have through their through the internet to um, become to allow them to become further isolated." from your home environment, which is really the healing place to be. So his suggestion was to, to limit that, you know, acknowledging that teenagers are going to be a little bit ragey um, uh, about that loss. Um, but his suggestion was especially in the evening, there has to be time for the mind and the body and the relationships in the home to heal. And he was including like, um, you know, dating relationships with that as well. Like teenagers already are not particularly moderate about their dating relationships. Um, it's excessive. They have constant connection to this other person. They can talk to a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or an interest, you know, while they're in the bathroom, while they're eating lunch, um, you know, while they're laying in bed at night. And at some point, even without this isolation, that is, um, that's unhealthy. And now that they're in our homes, in order to be able to reach their hearts and to be able to break through that isolation, um, there has to be some restriction. And that's what he was saying. Um, he would, what did he say? He said, um, that type of isolation creates a person who doesn't know how to survive on their own and who doesn't know how to get help when they need it and who doesn't know how to choose what's healthy. And so I don't have perfect answer for, um, how to maintain those relationships, but I would just say that we are in a parental position and we do have the ability to turn off the Wi-Fi. We also have the ability to, um, uh, you know, turn off the roaming or whatever, um, by phone and we have the ability to limit that the reaction isn't going to be super good um, and they can still have you know I, I guess it's like any of the losses that we're experiencing there's that acceptance there's that grief there's that loss we need to love them through that and we also have to help them to a healing healthy place instead of allowing them to like dive into this little hole and just be like you know what 
oh, I miss you, and I'm, I'm, I'm pining, and, and, and everything else healthy in my life is falling away. So, yeah. so good, Melody. As your yeah. son is so wise. Like, well yeah. done, Mama. You have yeah. you have raised a true adult there. That's yes. awesome. Yes. I agree, because we have let them feel the feels, but then the reality is that as parents, we continue to point them back to reality. We continue to point them back to truth. We continue to, we have to just keep turning their heads back to what is real. And what is real is like that they may not have their friends um, or their, you know, their virtual world for a time being, but they have real people, like real people. I, my parents are getting, are getting there to the end of their life and I want every minute with them our teenagers aren't thinking I want every minute with my parents right but we just have to keep pointing them to their sibling relationships pointing them back to us and and creating and we we have to show them to you guys because we have our phones we're managing business I'm managing business through my phone and we're scrolling and we can't say talk out both sides of our mouth like we show them that we actually want to be with them by being engaged with them. We show them how to be present to one another. My husband and I, no phones, we're gonna eye contact and talk and be present to each other. And it's okay if they don't if, if respond immediately, they will come around, be patient with them. Just be patient with your kids and can be consistent. Even though it's just, it's not easy, but you guys, we're not supposed to do the easy things. like. You know, we're made, we're made for more, right? And I just, oh gosh, if I can just encourage you guys. I know I need encouragement because it is hard. It is hard to walk the walk, you know? So you're just, you're not alone and we're here doing this with you and you can do it. The devil doesn't want you to think you can do it. He's going to whisper in your ear, just let it go. Let them be. They don't respect you. They don't love you. They don't care. Those are lies. Your kids respect you. Your kids love you. They need you. You shut him out. Amen. You be. You be. Absolutely. I think that's a great place to end. Too. I do too. <laughs> you know, like just take that out into your day. Yep. yep. Well, thank you, Melody and Susan, for being with us. Could you each share? Um, both of you are bloggers. I know, Melody, you have a book, uh, your first book coming out later this spring. How can those on the call and those who are listening to the recording uh, find you on the, on the web, on Instagram? How can they keep in contact with you after today? Melody, let's start with you. Sure. Well, you can find me at theessentialmother.com. That's my website, and my social media accounts are linked from there. I'm also... Uh, the Essential Mother on Instagram and um, on Facebook, Melody Lyons at The Essential Mother. Perfect. Okay. And what about you, Susan? How do we find you? Yeah. Well, I uh, my blogging days are in the dust because I have <laughs> no time. But that's um, okay. You have wonderful past posts that have yeah. deeply impacted my life. So there's still up okay. there. So my my old archived blog is soul searching mama but it's with it's s-o-l-e because it's i'm a runner so it's soul and then searching and then mama m-a-m-a and then um same thing on instagram um and you guys can message me through there and but instagram is probably the best way to get a hold of me i really don't do very much with um facebook so yeah okay. that's all right that's it. Thank you both so much. And then you can find Elizabeth Foss on Instagram with her name. And also her blog is elizabethfoss.com. We are going to continue our virtual mom hangouts on Zoom Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Coming up next week, we are going to talk with Danielle Bean Thursday at 9 about being a work from home mom with all your kids home and what that looks like and how you can get your work done that you need to get done and also be the mother and the homemaker that you are. So Danielle is Thursday. And then next Saturday, we're going to chat with Lorraine Bennett. She's the co-author with her husband of the book, The Temperament God Gave Your Kids. And we're going to talk about kids and their individual temperaments and how as mothers, we can love each of our children through this season uh, in the way that God designed them. So that's coming up. So we will have the recording up if you want to share this recording today with any of your friends who need it. I know there's a lot of mamas of teenagers out there who are feeling just like each of you here are feeling and, and need that encouragement. So we'll have, uh, Elizabeth and I will have the YouTube link up 
hopefully later today on our Instagram account so you can uh, share it with anyone who needs it. So thank you, Elizabeth, for everything thanks today. Thanks so much. So this is everyone. awesome. All right. Susan and Melody, thanks to you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.